Good evening. Dark RP is one of the most popular game modes in Gary's Mod, and it has been since its inception. It's existed for a long time, as long as I can remember, and I don't think it's going anywhere either. Players love to hop on these servers to goof around, meet people, and make memories. It's a truly special thing. And since the most well-known Gmod Dark RP map, Downtown, has been covered to death in video after video, today I'm going to shine the spotlight onto some more obscure roleplay maps that, though they may have fallen into obscurity, I still think deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame. I'm only going to cover two maps in this video, but if there's enough interest I could easily turn this into a series. And just as a disclaimer for those Gmod veterans out there, I'm aware that a lot of roleplay maps may have initially been made for Dark RP's predecessor Light RP, or even Half-Life 2 Deathmatch roleplay. But in these videos, I'm going to be referring to these as just Dark RP maps for the sake of brevity. Now that that's out of the way... This is Ova City, and it traces back to at least Gary's Mod 9. In fact, there's actually a Gmod 9 server still running it if you can believe that. However, unfortunately, just like Dodd BSL, I couldn't find any definitive name for this map's original creator, nor its exact release date. But what I could find was multiple alternative versions of it that I've never personally played on before. Each of them are a little different, but for this video I've decided to focus on GMC5, which on top of being the one I remember, appears to be the most popular in the latest official version. Don't worry, you're not missing out on much, most of the others seem to be nothing but early builds with duller lighting and fewer buildings. Ova City is decently sized, and has a bit more to offer than you might expect from such an early map. Beginning with just the locations, there's a pizzeria featuring a tiny concert stage, two bathrooms, and even brush-based pizzas, a vehicle shop with a selection of a couple old custom car models, the food store, which despite its name primarily sells laundry detergent, bleach, and booze, and Ikea, whose employee of the month is seemingly the Queen of England listed as Pamela Anderson, a very unconventional bank, which is actually just a single hallway leading to a laser-protected vault, plenty of neatly furnished houses and apartments for you to call home, an electronics store and next door an eBay store, a single courtroom overseen by Strider Head here, a gun store and a 7-Eleven, which are both manned by lone NPC vendors, a chop shop with two entrances and a working garage, a three-story hospital, which boasts an impressive 50% survival rate, the random store, which unfortunately seems to be nothing more than a furniture shop, and finally, the Combine Police Department, which has five cells, one being solitary confinement, a couple of upstairs offices, a garage for police vehicles, and an Osama Bin Laden wanted poster. That should help give you a taste of just how old this map is. And moving on to some simple trivia about Ova City, there's a functional subway system that wraps around the entire town. I don't know how much use you could really make of this, but it's novel. Things like this weren't very common in roleplay maps back then. There's buttons to lock and unlock the entrance to almost every building in the map. And there's alarm buttons in stores which display a notification on screen to alert the police. There's a secret bunker underneath the random store, which has a hidden exit right next to the fabled horse penis statue. And finally, if you press on this particular brick, a beam launches out of this building, then triggers an alarm and a huge red explosion. I've heard this referred to as a bombing or even a meteor shower, but I couldn't tell you what the author actually intended it to be. It's just weird. I remember being a kid and using the dupe tool to try to save these pizzas from the pizzeria so I could spawn them in other maps. From what I remember, you can dupe them on Ova City just fine, but if you try to spawn them anywhere else, it'll crash the game. Bummer. And this is sort of silly, but I remember an SCP roleplay map that once you escaped the facility, just straight up had Ova City copy and pasted at the top of it. If anyone can find that map, let me know in the comments. It kind of feels like a fever dream. Anyway, let's move on to our next map. This is Amsterville, and its origins are much better documented than Ova City. In fact, I can tell you right now that the map was made in 2007 by a man named F. Kalkman, whose website is still up and offers official downloads for each of his maps. Amsterville's official description, which is included on Kalkman's site and in a readme file of the provided download, tells us that it's set in Holland, and loosely based on Amsterdam. Amsterville has a lot of buildings, some honorable, some not, but nearly all of them are given endearing names and printed on custom textures. The map's packed with culture from an era gone by, and I encourage you to explore it yourself, especially if you were into gaming culture back then. But to give you a rundown, this map is split into three areas, which I consider the plaza, the downtown area, and the riverside. Starting with the plaza, there's Spar, which is a tiny packed convenience store, Van Leeuwen Bench and Wrench, a hardware store, Tobacco and Gifts, a concession stand selling cigarettes, chips, and drinks, Vite Computers, a hardware shop filled with era-appropriate machinery and games, Amstel Beer, a bar and lounge with working vending machines, Lieutenant Arnold, a weapons store with the beautiful tagline, Weapons to Buy, Enemies to Die, 
Media Break, another very era-appropriate store filled with books, movies, and games, and a milkshake bar. Shake it, baby. Moving on to the downtown area, there's a police station with three prison cells, an armory, and a cop garage just outside. A gas station branded Escape with its own retextured pumps and oil barrels. A doctor's office aptly titled The Local Doctor. A train station with a couple of trains visible in the distance. And last but not least, two two-story houses and a hotel, each sporting beautiful brush-based furniture and a view over the water. Now to the final and my personal favorite part of the map, the Riverside. First is the Fisherman's Diner, a steakhouse with a nice second story and a bathroom that lacks a door. And right next to that is the fittingly named Cafe Riverview, a comfortable spot with nice outdoor seating looking out over the dock. I'll be honest, this map makes me want to visit Amsterdam. Anyway, before we close, there's some other things I want to note about this map. The first thing is its atmosphere. It's a very tight map for the most part, but still manages to be cozy, and it's a time capsule of its era as well. And despite how blocky, primitive, and jank this map is in places, I still find it beautiful. Walking around, you can really see how much effort and soul was put into it. Second, the lightning flashes. Look, it can't all be good. I know there's some versions that remove these, but in the original they get really annoying. Second only to the abundance of self-advertising the creator of the map does. His name appears on screen constantly, his brand plastered on everything in the map. Look, I can understand why he'd be proud of it, but I feel like this is overkill. He's apparently open-sourced the map and given the okay for people to learn from and edit it though, so big props for that. This Trouble in Terrorist Town version set at night is intriguing. Third is the abundance of custom content. Custom cereal, custom signs, custom gas station pumps, custom movie posters. Hell, custom brush-based ATM machines. In fact, this map even includes custom vehicles, remnants of an era long gone by. Back in the day, a lot of RP maps would add built-in cars like this. But the practice died out over time and was abandoned altogether once the Source engine got an update that bugged them out and made them unsteerable. Here, look, I booted the map up in Gmod 9 and the cars are fully functional. But that's all I have for now. Let me know if you have any memories on these old maps. Thanks for watching, have a good day.